What if I told you that Nikon Nikonomi is almost like a Sharingan in the sense that it allows the user to imitate things that he has seen? What if I said all of Luffy's gears with the exception of Fipt are direct imitations of his enemies in times past? Don't believe me? Stay tuned. What's going on, people? It's your boy Astro, aka The Galaxy Shogun. If this is your first time here, let me know in the comments. Thank you sincerely to everybody who subscribed and left such great comments. We're getting a lot of engagement, and I'm really happy at the success that this channel has had in the few short weeks since I have created it. Um, you know, it really inspires me to continue when I read so much nice comments and seeing people actually interacting. It's just a great feeling to, you know, be finally making some headway in this long YouTube journey. Um, as I say at the beginning of every video, I have a goal of 10,000 subs, so if you want to help me out, hit that sub button for a ton more One Piece content, as well as other controversial anime rants. So, with the revelation of Luffy's Devil Fruit not being the Gomu Gomu Nomi, but in fact being the Hito Hito Nomi model Nika, it puts a lot of things that were previously seen as odd into perspective. Especially in the Wano arc leading up to the reveal, there were quite a few people that thought there was something strange with Luffy's power. Let's take a deep dive. Up until Gear Second, Luffy's powers were pretty straightforward. Everything you might expect for a person with the so-called Rubber Rubber Fruit. Stretching, expanding, and other cartoon-like abilities. <laughs> when speaking about Gear 2nd, many people forget that it was inspired by CP9 Shave, which at the time definitely seemed very weird for some people, and a lot of people today still bring this up as, you know, kind of a very convenient power-up, but I think in retrospect it makes a lot of sense. Considering that Luffy, you know, had his ass as well as Zoro generally served to him by Rob Lucci, <laughs> probably, you know, not even a few hours earlier. For those of you that don't understand how Gear Second works, the anime, I suppose, science for it is that he's pumping his blood really fast to pump his adrenaline and do everything faster and stronger. It's worth mentioning that Luffy also revealed Gear Third in Eddie's lobby. This one was a bit more believable, obviously, as Luffy had already shown the ability to inflate himself with moves such as Gomu Gomu no Fusen, which is obviously Gum Gum Balloon, and, uh, you know, many other things that he's done up until that time, including, you know, inflating himself, which, again, he used Balloon to defeat Crocodile. That was a pretty big moment. So people had already seen Luffy kind of utilizing that, but this was obviously the first time he actually, you know, blew air into his bones, because I guess, once again, the anime logic for this one is that he's blowing air into his bones. He would go, Hon Fusen, which is bone balloon, right? So he doesn't really say that anymore in current episodes or since post time skip, I don't think, but um, it's important to remember how these things work within the confines of this series. So let's take a look at Gear 4th. So Gear 4th is obviously inspired by the animals that Luffy had to fight on Ruskana. Gear 4th Bounce Man was based off the gorillas, and so is the naming conventions for a lot of his attacks, being Kong and all those other things. King Kong, in fact. Luffy's forms before Gear 5th have all had some sort of inspiration, if you think about it. The Nikin Nikinomi is so ridiculous, it literally lets the user copy physical aspects from other users that he's seen. The possibilities of this fruit may truly be endless, especially in the hands of someone like Luffy. It completely makes sense why the Gorosei say this is the most ridiculous fruit out there. The reason is because it truly can do everything. Let's cut to the chase. Luffy copied Shade for Gear Second and what he witnessed on Little Garden, and likely inspiration from the giants on Little Garden, for Gear 3rd. With Gear 4th, he copied the animals on Ruskana, you know, his Kong, where he kind of pulls in his fist, it's kind of spring-loaded, so I know I'm not the only one that probably notices. He might have actually picked up a thing or two from Bellamy. In fact, he does even show off his bouncing during the final bout with Doflamingo before he transforms into Gear 4th. All of Luffy's gears are, in fact, different forms that he's able to utilize because of his devil fruit. Luffy has in fact just imitated his enemies and will likely continue to do so in the future to create and copy and borrow these techniques. The devil fruit that Luffy has, which is the Hito Hito no Mi Mato Nika, does not in fact just give the user a gear second or a gear third or a gear fourth. That is what makes this power so amazing. Even though it's technically, you know, a pretty BS power for being honest, the amount of stealing plus the creativity that Luffy puts on top of it makes it just a unbelievable power to have. I think it would be more appropriate to actually name this fruit the Imagination Fruit because 
He's the cartoon god with Gear Fit. He effectively, up until this point, has shown the ability to imitate just about anything that he's seen with his body physically, and now we even have elements, which previously were a point of confusion for a lot of people, so I think it's worth touching on that. Up until Fishman Island, Luffy hadn't really displayed any elemental powers. That all changed in that magical moment, though. <laughs> All of a sudden, we're cooking with fire. To cement my point further, the anime even went as far as to point out that his elemental abilities were inspired by Ace. Red Hawk is a homage to Ace, but it is not just a homage, it is in fact an imitation. Do you guys remember? Oh, it's vulcanization underwater. Oh, it's friction. Wrong! Is it safe to call that headcanon now? With the revelation of Gear 5th, it is safe to say, in actuality, it was Luffy's Devil Fruit, which itself has an affinity to fire, being the Sun God Fruit, but also highlighting once again, Luffy had just been copying what he has been seeing around. Are we starting to understand just how spectacular this fruit really is? Luffy, in all actuality, can likely really do anything that comes to his mind, and that is terrifying. This would also explain why Luffy was able to pick up Future Sight so quickly from the fight with Katakuri. Now, that fight spanned multiple hours, I believe it was like 12-13 hours straight of fighting, which is impressive. Again, Luffy is rubber, so durability is kind of implied for a character that has rubber powers. But, this revelation lets us know that Luffy has an affinity of copying people. His fruit really allows him to do anything, so there's really not a better match made in heaven. Him being able to grasp Future Sight in that short amount of time no longer feels like something that's convenient. With the seeds that Oda had been planting up until this point, I think it's actually very justifiable now knowing what his fruit is. Gear 5th or Luffy's full Sun God form, has been stated to be his full transformation, giving him enhanced speed and enhanced power, likely in fact borrowing from the same anime logic that supported Gear 2nd and Gear 3rd. To put this very plainly, people, Gear 5th, his awakening, is his full zone transformation. Think of it this way. If I were to eat, I don't know, let's call it the Eagle Fruit, and I had a transformation that was a hybrid form, and I was half eagle. And then I had a form where I was full eagle. That would be considered my full transformation. Other examples of this would be Morko's full phoenix form, or Yamato's full Mikami form. In Luffy's case, it is a godly Hitohito fruit. Very similar to that of Son Goku being the Buddha, Luffy's fruit, the full version of this, is in fact the Sun God, which is Gear 5th, which again gives him all the enhanced power and speed of the previous gears, and I will explain how and again why it is so beautiful that he gets to borrow everything that he's imitated up until this point. The drums of liberation, they have been mentioned a lot, and it is what started this transformation for Luffy when he was basically killed. The drums of liberation started beating again. The drums of liberation, people, are a metaphor for Luffy's heart. It's a metaphor for his heart beating at an even more accelerated rate, giving him even more speed than Gear 2nd, as his blood is being pumped at an insane rate. Like, how insane is that? That even with the drums of liberation, they are alluding to, once again, an even more powerful version of Gear 2nd, more or less as a passive ability this time, while in Gear 5th. In terms of physical strength enhancements, Luffy can now enlarge himself without adding air. This is an insane buff. Luffy is now actually able to multiply his mass rather than just artificially adding air, which by the way, did add more mass to the area, but is nothing compared to a giant arm. And I wanna dive into that one a little bit more because there is a difference. So, you know, speed obviously is gonna add more force because mass times speed or mass times acceleration equals force. I hate to get sciencey with you, and this is the, you know, <laughs> very cliche of power scaling conversation. But if your speed increases, you get stronger. If your mass increases, you get stronger. In this case, both of them have increased for Gear 5th Luffy. And it's important to point out the difference between something like Gear 3rd, where you're actually blowing air in and kind of artificially enlarging that surface area, versus being able to actually expand the mass. You have way more mass with the giant fist versus a fist that was more or less just a balloon filled with air. 
That is why Gear 5th borrows from Gear 2nd and Gear 3rd and gets a massive, massive buff by doing so. Of course, Luffy also has the ability to affect what's around him, which could also be an inherent ability of his Devil Fruit or something else that he imitated. He saw Awakening from Doflamingo, the Joker himself. Luffy is a zone. I don't know that we have examples so far of zones being able to affect their environment in the way that Paramecias can, like Doflamingo. And Katakuri, in fact, because Doflamingo was able to turn items on the street of Dressrosa into literal strings, and Katakuri, respectively, is able to turn everything in the mirror world into mochi. Luffy is also able to turn everything around him into rubber, as seen when he blocks Kaido's Boro Breath by turning the ground into rubber and creating a shield. It was pretty damn fire. Finally, in Gear 5th, this is the one people were probably waiting for me to touch on. This may be his most shocking feat. Grabbing friggin' lightning. He has emitted, you know, some lightning during his clash with Don Shin Zhao, and also if you've seen the Strong World movie, that's kind of how it ends, versus Shiki, you know, he does a Thor axe. But can you think of anyone in canon he might have learned that from, or been able to imitate in regards to wielding thunder and lightning? Anno, another enemy that Luffy, you know, has technically imitated a bit. With his now grabbing of lightning, he is looking very Enno-like, you know? So, Enno might not even be the only inspiration. It's unclear if he just, like, grabbed the lightning during the aerial battle. You know, there was just lightning chilling up there, and he grabs it and rubberized it, or if he actually produced it. But folks, do not be surprised if when the anime expands on this scene, it shows him actually producing and summoning the lightning, as we already know he could produce fire. With the fruit like his, is it really out of the question? He did not only have Enel as a reference, but also Big Mom and Kaido as well, as they also have shown the ability to use electricity, lightning, thunder, all the works. Elemental abilities in One Piece have always had some rationale behind it, being supported by Queen the Sark again, where he calls out Sanji for having such a trash explanation of why he's able to turn himself on fire. That was something that was also kind of questionable, you know, saying it's just how how hot his heart blazes that gives him full-on mare mare powers you know that was another time we just kind of cranked the suspension of disbelief up to 11 and just went okay anime logic but here we have queen saying no let's be realistic if uh you know you're using elemental powers you're probably not a regular human that's kind of not what regular humans do so it's nice to see that awareness from oda in this arc going forward if people are utilizing elemental attacks please don't overlook it I'm not going to go too much more into this elemental attack thing, because like I said, a lot of people are theorizing that it could be a feature of hockey, but that's a video for another day. So, to reiterate, Gear 2nd, CP9, Gear 3rd, the Giants on Little Garden, Gear 4th, Animals on Ruskina, Miscellaneous Abilities, Ace being Red Hawk, Bellamy being his spring bouncing moves, and also to some extent Kong Gun, since it does kind of have a spring mechanism, and then grabbing thunder and wielding lightning in Gear 5th, the Thunder God himself, NL. Hopefully I have provided adequate evidence that so far in the story it has been shown that anything Luffy goes up against, at some point or another, he will copy it or make a variation of his own. Luffy is in fact the master copycat of the One Piece verse. I truly believe that an ability in Gear 5th that we have not seen yet but is definitely coming will be the ability to shape shift. Yes, that is right. That means at some point we may actually see Luffy transform into different animals, including mythical ones. You get what I'm saying, people? We might see Luffy one day, maybe the final battle, maybe versus Blackbeard, transform into something like a dragon. Wow. And it's all thanks to the Hito Hito, Model Nika. It's pretty boy Astro, aka the Galaxy Shogun. If you enjoyed this video, please show your boys some love by liking, subscribing if you haven't already, and leaving a comment letting me know your thoughts. I reply to everything, so I hope to see you down there in the comments. Also, let me know if there's anything else you would like me to make a video on. Thanks again for everybody that made it to the end of the video. I really appreciate you, and remember, always work towards your one. Peace!